A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, had a vision of an open door to heaven, and I heard the trumpet-like voice that had spoken to me before, saying, come up here, and I will show you what must happen afterwards. At once, I was caught up in spirit. A throne was there in heaven, and on the throne sat one whose appearance sparkled like jasper and carnelian. Around the throne was a halo as brilliant as an emerald. Surrounding the throne, I saw 24 other thrones on which 24 elders sat, dressed in white garments and with gold crowns on their heads. From the throne came flashes of lightning, rumblings and peals of thunder. Seven flaming torches burned in front of the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. In front of the throne was something that resembled a sea of glass like crystal. In the center and around the throne, there were four living creatures covered with eyes in front and in back. The first creature resembled a lion. The second was like a calf. The third had a face like that of a man, and the fourth looked like an eagle in flight. The four living creatures, each of them with six wings, were covered with eyes inside and out. Day and night, they do not stop exclaiming, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and who is and who is to come. Whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to the one who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before the one who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. They throw down their crowns before the throne, exclaiming, worthy are you, Lord our God, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things. Because of your will, they came to be and were created. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. Holy, holy, holy Lord, mighty God. Holy, holy, holy Lord, mighty God. Praise the Lord in his sanctuary, Praise him in the firmament of his strength. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him for his sovereign majesty. Holy, 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 Lord, mighty God. Praise him with the blast of the trumpet. Praise him with lyre and harp. Praise him with timbrel and dance. Praise him with strings and pipe. Holy, 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 Lord, mighty God. Praise him with sounding cymbals. Praise him with clanging cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Alleluia. Holy, 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 Lord, mighty God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. While people were listening to Jesus speak, he proceeded to tell a parable because he was near Jerusalem and they thought that the kingdom of God would appear there immediately. So he said, A nobleman went off to a distant country to obtain the kingship for himself and then return. 
He called ten of his servants and gave them ten gold coins and told them, Engage in trade with these until I return. His fellow citizens, however, despised him and sent a delegation after him to announce, We do not want this man to be our king. But when he returned after obtaining the kingship, he had his servants called, to whom he had given the money, to learn what they had gained by trading. The first came forward and said, Sir, your gold coin has earned ten additional ones. He replied, Well done, good servant. You've been faithful in this small matter. Take charge of ten cities. The second came and reported, Your gold coin, sir, has earned five more. To the servant, <clears throat> to the servant too, he said, You, take charge of five cities. Then the other servant came and said, Sir, here is your gold coin. I kept it stored away in a handkerchief, for I was afraid of you, because you are a demanding man. You take up what you did not lay down, and you harvest what you did not plant. He said to him, With your own words I shall condemn you, you wicked servant. You knew I was a demanding man, taking up what I did not lay down and harvesting what I did not plant. Why did you not put my money in a bank? Then on my return, I would have collected it with interest. To those standing by, he said, Take the gold coin from him and give it to the servant who has ten. But they said to him, Sir, he has ten gold coins. He replied, I tell you, to everyone who has, more will be given. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. Now, as for those enemies of mine who did not want me to be their king, bring them here and slay them before me. After he had said this, he proceeded on his journey up to Jerusalem. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, very quickly, I can presume that you can hear the echoes of this past Sunday's Gospel in today's version, but you notice that there's a kind of a conflation of another parable hooked into it at the beginning and the end. Let us just observe the fact that almost certainly the parable refers to King Herod. We'll leave it alone at that. Let's look at Revelation instead. What are we talking about here? Basically, we're talking about what goes on in heaven as related to what goes on here on earth, particularly what goes on here in this church on Wednesdays. We're talking about a scene of adoration, but it certainly sounds a lot different from the kind of adoration that we have here on Wednesdays, which is quiet and focused and prayerful. And here, you got thunder and lightning and spirits flying all over the place and everyone crying out, holy, holy, holy. It's quite a scene. It's quite a scene. And so I want to make the suggestion to you that what we've got then comparing our Wednesdays here with the description of adoration and worship here in Revelation is a distinction that is made very, very interestingly by C.S. Lewis in his book, The Pilgrim's Regress, when he says, there is a distinction that can be made between truth and fact. And that's finally, finally kind of an interesting distinction. And I would suggest that it looks like this. When we engage in Eucharistic adoration, we engage in the truth. We engage in the truth. But, as St. Paul reminds us in 1 Corinthians, now we see as in a cloudy mirror. Then we shall see face to face. And so the distinction between the truth the, here and the actual fact the hardcore fact of God's presence in heaven is the distinction that is being made here. We see sacramentally. We're destined to see, as St. Augustine says in the Liturgy of the Hours today, we're destined to see face-to-face, -face, really, to be changed fully. So we worship in faith and in hope, knowing that, as St. Paul says in 2 Corinthians, he says, we walk by faith, not by sight. And he says in 1 Corinthians, well, pardon me, in Romans chapter 8, we're saved in hope. Hope does not see yet, because if it does, then it's not hope anymore. There's our hope, there's our faith, here's the truth. But our destiny is to taste and see the Lord is good and to enjoy him in fact as well as in truth. So let us stand now and pray.